Hey fellow interlopers, it's Destroy Yesterday here again. Uh, today we're gonna go, I'm gonna give you a, a guide on star system classifications as well as planetary types um, to help you whether or not you should visit that system or even go down to the nitty gritty and actually visit a planet if it's worth it or not. Um, so in a general sense, the numbers behind the class type of system do have a meaning. Um, if it's a number one through three, it's going to be a little bit more dry, um, less life, um, a little bit more toxic. Um, some you'll sometimes get a, a couple extreme planets in those um, as well. If it's uh, four through six, then they're more likely to be habitable um, star systems. Um, within G's, four through six usually mean there's most likely a ocean in that. So, for instance, like a G4 through G6 will most likely have an ocean. <clears throat> now, 7 through 9 are usually the more extreme type of plant, uh, star systems. Um, now, usually those are the ones that have uh, the P or the F behind them. Now, the P and the F stand for essentially rarities within that system. Um, now, most of the world has not yet figured out exactly what those mean, but uh, PF usually indicate a rarity of some sort. Um, so those can be worth your while to visit, um, no matter if it's toxic or not, you do have a higher chance of getting rarities. They will not always be there, though. Um, it's just telling you that there's a higher chance. Um, so right now, you can see that right I'm in a E5 PF so a habitable green system planets that will be most likely more habitable so let's check it out so looking here we'll start off as you can see some we're gonna go over like what the scanner on your ship finds when you scan a planet um, so right now as you see it only finds a certain type of <coughs> solids um, now, if the planet just has solids, that means it's most likely going to be habitable, um, weather-wise. And um, but you ought to always make sure and find the where the sun. Oh, excuse me, put the wrong one. You gotta always make sure and find where. The sun is. Because that will help you decide. So the sun's right over there. So not too far, not too close. It means this planet's probably going to be pretty decent right here. Um, so we go over here, Spadonium. That means the planet's going to be a little bit more dry. There's not going to be as much flora, but it will be habitable. Uh, let's keep that in mind go over here to this one as for vidium <clears throat> that means it's either toxic or um, radioactive so it depends usually where it is within the system how close the Sun is and what which one it's going to be but usually that's not a habitable place if it has for um, so we already looked at all these okay all right so just for the sake of it, I'm going to take you to a yellow, just to show you kind of what each kind of different place looks like. We're going to go find one though that has G4 through G6, just so it shows you that there is the likelihood of um, oceans. Now, um, I don't really want to, all right, is it a, a one that has not a lot of planets because the likelihood of you finding an ocean on them are less likely if you don't have as many choices. Okay. But keep that in mind too. Less planets it has, the less likely it is to find a, a good planet. As you can see here, the G4 through G6 are a little bit harder to come by, obviously, because they're the more rare types of planets that give you um, habitable places. Alright, G5P. We can go check this one out. I did forget to mention G O. 
K-O or E-O, those ones are going to be very rare. It's very hard to find planets with an O after the, the classification. Those ones can be just about anything. That one is a very luck of the draw. So it usually means it has a little bit of everything, which is why it's so low um, in the classification. So there's the sun. Here's a planet. Let's check it out. Scanner's recharging here. All right, emerald, nickel, and herdium. So as like I said, only solids will mean that it is habitable. Um, so that one could be. That, one, that one's worth visiting because of there's nothing on there that deems that it's not worth worth it. Now condensium, like I said, that's going to be radioactive so unless you need condensium there's really no point in visiting that or aluminum or nickel um this one so look at that vortex cubing corsogen so if i remember correctly this was a g5 am i correct yep so habitable Sometimes, and it had a P in it, so this gives you the, the rarities of a vortex cube. Um, Corsogen means that that planet is going to be cold. As you can see, it looks white. Um, but even some that don't look white are going to be cold if they have Corsogen um, when you scan them. So, um, that was good though for you to see that the P and the F do give you rarities. Um, and the rarities will always scan on your ship when you're in the system. You do not need to go to the planet to find the rarities. It will tell you when you scan it. Alright, cool. <clears throat> Let's go visit a red. Help you out here. Well, I don't have Warp Reactor Theta yet, so I can't really tell you much about the blues, unfortunately. KOP, K. -O -P, K. We're not going to go visit that one. I want one more that you're going to more see likely. Okay, K8. All right. So this type is going to be more extreme, but there is a chance of rarity to the P. So let's find out. I hope so far, though, this is helping you. Um, it has significantly helped me when I've figured this out, so I don't visit planets that are not worth it. And get disappointed, obviously, like, oh, a new planet. I see that. I'm going to go visit it, and then there's nothing there. So... Occasionally that will happen, but this will help you so that doesn't happen as much. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so red system, this one looks like... Oh, so that one's habitable. Hey, like I said, it only has uh, solids down there. So that one's worth it, visiting. All right, let's check out. Oh, it looks like they're all behind it. Okay. Well, let's go fly this way so we can see them. necessarily mean it's going to be extremely habitable. Um, looks like over here though, looks like we got an ocean on this one over here. But as you can see, it's cold with the corsogen. Now, if I remember correctly, this was a... I think this was a 7. Oh, 8. Okay. So, as you can see, my exploration techniques are somewhat accurate, but obviously they're not perfect because it's a procedurally generated video game. Um, but you can already tell though that that looks like that has an ocean on it. So, 
Um, so, yeah, that's about it. We're gonna go, let's just do a recap here. So, remembering, um, oops, the numbers, um, D1 through 3, anything 1 through 3 are gonna be a little bit more, uh, radioactive or toxic. Um, four through six are most likely going to be a little bit more habitable. And seven through nine are going to be a little bit more extreme. But obviously, as you can see here, it does get a little bit more rarities um, or luck of the draw. Um, the O's, zeros, are just about anything. You never know what can happen with those. Um, planet types, remember Spadonian, going to be a little bit more dry. Providium is either toxic or radioactive. Condensium is radioactive. Um, Tamarium is going to be toxic. We didn't see any of those yet, but if you do see Tamarium on a planet, it's going to be a toxic planet. And Corsogen is going to be cold. Um, and lastly, if you see a planet that just has straight up solids in there, then it's most likely going to be habitable depending on the location of the sun. And don't forget that the P and F do signify rarities. Your highly well, the likely likelihood of getting a rarity is more higher when you see the P or F behind the classification of star system. So yeah, if you guys see any questions that you might want me to answer or anything different you find, feel free to comment, feel free to like. Of course, always feel free to subscribe so I can help you some more out. Um, thanks guys.